Hey everybody, you are watching Ready, Set, Drone, and today I'm very excited. I'm going to be talking to a couple of members of the team at SOAR. Now, SOAR is a company based in Perth, Australia, and they are actually uh, democratizing and globalizing and crowdsourcing mapping for the entire planet. Um, they're going to tell us a little bit about that, so let's get started. Tell me a little bit about SOAR. What, what, um, you know, I tried to summarize it in the intro, but I don't know that I did it justice. I, I, I view you guys as kind of a crowdsourced, higher resolution because you're shooting with drones instead of satellites, global mapping company. Is that a fair assessment or what is it really? Yeah, definitely. I think that's a pretty good assessment. And I probably couldn't have said it better myself in, uh, in as few words as you did. So uh, taking a crack at a bigger explanation, um, yeah, we're definitely crowdsourced. We're, um, we're a community of, of drone pilots and as well drone imagery consumers. And so uh, the guys that have um, either drones as, as recreational users or guys that are small independent um, business owners and, and even scaling up to uh, independent companies, um, we're building a platform that they'll have access to to upload their images, share those images. We're looking to build what, what we're calling a global super map of all of those drone images so that uh, the resolution that you have from, say, satellites or, or website platforms, um, the nat natural inclination is to just go lower. You want to see more resolution. And um, our, our parent company um, is a geospatial company, and so we deal a lot with uh, positioning and, uh, and mapping mapping at its core, and drone imagery has really um, taken a, a strong foothold, I guess, in that industry because uh, we build a platform that's for mobile mapping out in the field, and um, the data that you can get, let's say, out in the bush, uh, you just don't have the resolution that you need um, to, to, to ground truth, things like that. So um, a lot of the people that use our platform, are, uh, drones are part of their daily kit, so they bring a drone out and they shoot they shoot images and they build over the mosaics, and so, um, so that's one aspect of SOAR. And, and while we're while we're talking today, uh, drones are are the focus, of course. But uh, we're building on that platform, so we're incorporating aerial imagery. We already have the ability to for people to source um, satellite imagery, and uh, further to that, we're um, adding. We already have plans and agreements for um, satellite weather as well as uh, micro weather, so drone weather. So being able to know where, um, you know, say small small cold fronts were, where uh, what the local winds were. So that's all going to be available on SOAR. So it's a platform, one, to, to load your images, sell your images, but also a way to, uh, I guess, manage your, your business in a way, because if you have access to that micro weather, you're going to know when a good time is to go out. Um, that's, uh, I guess, a, a bit of a... A short explanation. Dan, Dan, Dan comes from the commercial side of drones. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, so we're actually really trying to utilize all of that unused data that so many drone pilots have out there. When they're flying missions, as you well know, um, you will generally go out and shoot the mission for the client, and most people will tend to overshoot. So a lot of people have underutilized data at their, at their call, that they're, um, it's basically just sitting there on their hard drive gathering dust. And that's where SOAR comes in. We'd really like to take that unused data and apply it to our platform and um, democratize that data, basically. So if, if someone wanted to participate as a, as a pilot, um, what, what would they do? I mean, not, not necessarily the mechanics of how to sign up, but what is it, is it like every time you fly, you can uh, you can offer that data to uh, to soar, or is it something where you go out and fly special missions, or how does that work? It's a combination of both, actually. Um, we will have a, a a an area of the platform that is made specifically for preset missions that people can set to apply pilots to go out and specifically shoot those locations. Plus, we want to access all of those that extra data and that unutilized data that drone pilots generally gather you know, over the course of their career as a pilot. So And and in terms of um, in terms of how you stitch all this together, you mentioned ortho mosaics and and uh, different mapping techniques. Uh, it is it, um, it it just seems to me like if you're 
dealing with different resolutions. You know, you're dealing with some people shooting in 4K, some people shooting in 1080, different frame rates. Uh, well, of course, I wonder if, are we talking about strictly stills or video as well? For, for its current implementation, SOAR is uh, still video. I'm sorry, still still images. Okay. Um, something we're looking to, to implement down the track, but as you can imagine, and as you just highlighted, there's more, uh, I guess, more parameters that you have to deal with that are going to separate one drone image from the other. So um, I think, you know, uh, we'll have the functionality to, to geo-reference, of course, where those images are, and, and people will be able to go and source um, videos. Uh, but for right now, um, and to, to simplify, it's going to be still imagery. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and that and that I can see where the complexity of video would be would be uh, like tenfold or more, you know, versus stills. Um, in terms of in terms of pilots being able to participate, uh, does it require a certain type of drone, or does it require that you're uh, certified, you know, Part 107 in the U.S. or whatever it is called in Australia, or can hobbyists participate as well? Uh, absolutely, we are looking for hobbyists and professional and certified pilots as well. Um, mainly due to the fact that a lot of hobbyists do have so much data available to them. So we are looking to onboard both commercial and hobbyist, hobbyist pilots. So back to, back to how you, um, how you actually tag. Um, I mean, I know that there's data on every picture, not, you know, whether it's with your phone or even a lot of, um, a lot of just point and shoot cameras, uh, DSLRs have, um, uh, GPS data built into them. Is that how this works? So let me give you an example. I was just in West Texas, uh, kind of out in the desert, out in, out in the bush, the, the Texas bush, and shooting um, some video, just some really pretty plateaus, and but a lot of a lot of dirt, a lot of dust, um, you know, not a lot of buildings. Uh, and honestly, if I were to have to figure out exactly where I was again in a couple of times uh, shooting, I don't even know exactly where I was on a map. I just picked a good spot that was isolated and, and uh, in airspace that I could fly in. Uh, is that space where I took those pictures, that's all mapped directly to the metadata in the photos. Is that correct? Yes, that's absolutely correct, yes. Our, the SOAR platform actually reads the EXIF data straight from that is captured with the photo as well. So that contains just about all the data that we need, including the geo hash, your GPS coordinates, your elevation when the photo was taken, even the angle of incidence of the camera itself. Oh wow! I was so, going to ask about I was going to ask about angle of incidence or the tilt of the camera as well as the altitude because that's another factor. You know, if one if one pilot gives you a hundred foot image view. And another gives you 200 foot, uh, you know, or meters. Um, it's going to be a different perspective, but it could be the same spot, right? Absolutely, yes. And our platform does read all of that data as well and keeps that all within the system, so it, it maintains your, ge your geographical location precisely. Yeah. Uh, other use case, other use case scenarios would be, um, you know, we know that the U.S. is just getting slammed by hurricanes this year, and so. Um, one, one use case scenario would be for insurance companies wanting to assess um, the damage that's been brought about by, uh, by a hurricane. And so uh, if there was um, images along those, so let's say you're a drone pilot and you know that, that well, hey, summer's coming, I want to go out and, and uh, shoot images over the outer islands um, of the beachfront properties. He's got, he's got images effectively in the bank that these satellite companies make, could, I'm sorry, these insurance companies could use uh, for um, when people go to file claims. It's, yeah, absolutely. Uh, this, this is you what exists for, uh, you know, and they could use it to vet false claims if somebody said, look, I had all these improvements. Well, you know, here's, we have, a, we have sort of evidence that, you know, your claim needs yeah. to be adjusted accordingly. So, so, so insurance companies would be a, a, a big potential client for this. Absolutely. Uh, news media would be another one as well yeah. for tracing historical uh, imagery as far as uh, whatever news story they happen to be covering. Oh, um, real, real estate certainly a good one. So, for example, if you were to go on the, the SOAR testnet, uh, one of my um, in-laws is a real estate photographer, and um, he took some images of a, uh, of a country property. So it's, a, it's on a few acres, and, and that, that type of... of um, house always needs aerial imagery to sort of sell sure. that. So 
Um, if a if a real estate um, real estate company wanted images, they could simply key in the address of that house into our platform, and it would go right to that address and tell them whether or not there's images. And they could source those images virtually from their desktop without any any interaction with the drone pilot himself. And oh, that's have awesome. Those, have those images on their website, you know, with literally within you know ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Versus having to hire a drone pilot to go out there and shoot. If it's already been shot, this is this is a place where you could go in and and uh, take advantage of that, not reinvent the wheel, so to speak. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Well, guys, I mean, what a what a cool thing you're doing. And I think uh, it, it sounds to me like something that someone is going to do it, right? And and you're you're early to the market and getting this done. And it's also a cool opportunity for people who maybe want to make some passive income, as you said, flying their drone. Um, it sounds like it's something that if you, if you're a decent pilot, you know how to date, you know, frame up and take decent photos and get the exposures right and all, all that you can participate and, and learn along the way, you know, and also be part of something really cool with, which is building this entire new, you know, as you said, super map. Yeah, definitely. And, and, um, I mean, it, it speaks to drone operators of all levels. Um, you made an example of somebody who can take very artistic, um, highly stylized shots, who sets up the shot. Uh, and likewise, it could be for somebody like myself who I don't have that uh, inherent capability, but, um, you know, if I was interested in going out and mapping, sending the drone off on a mission and just saying, look, map this area, go out and, get, and gather images, um, you know, even from a hobby perspective, that's kind of fun, and then I'm sharing that, that imagery with the world. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Uh, I have two quick aside questions. Um, what is the certification in Australia called for professional drone pilot? Is there a name uh, for it? Uh, yes, we have a, a UAV certified license from CASA, which is the Civil, Agri- Civil Aviation Safety Authority in Australia. Okay. It's out of the FAA. Um, we also have slightly different rules here in Australia regarding compared to you guys as far as monetization of your drone content here. We actually have a sub two kilo class, which means that you can operate commercially without being licensed. Ah, so, if it's under two kilograms. Correct. Which is what, and about that, five pounds? I'm not yeah, sure about the exact yeah, calculations, but your drone, your, your, um, your Phantom drone series of drones falls underneath that two kilo class. So okay. it still gives you a reasonable platform to go out there and capture very good data and imagery. But if you want to go to something like a Matrice or a, or a Inspire, you may have to get certified. Absolutely. If you want to fly those platforms here in Australia, you do commercially, you do absolutely need to get certified, yes. And what's, what's the process? Is it just a, is it a test, um, a knowledge test that you take? It's a, uh, a course. You actually have to go and uh, study a week's course and then you do practical as well. So basically the, the week's course is almost pilot training. Um, you do, you cover all of the areas that the average pilot who flies a plane will cover. You also obviously cover radio controllers and then you do your practical drone test and flying as well. Very cool. Very cool. And what, uh, just another aside, which I think my audience would be interested in, if, if you came to visit, uh, Australia, just as on vacation, as a hobby, you're not there to fly for money or anything. Uh, how is how is the temperature? How how friendly are people generally in the government towards uh, drone pilots? We're actually pretty good down here. We've adopted the technology quite well, especially from a governmental level. Uh, we t- the government and the CASA tends to follow your FAA as far as regulations quite closely. Um, so a certain altitude that, heights and distance from the airport and don't correct. fly with people and all that sort of thing. Yeah, it's exactly the same as, as your regulations over there. 400 feet maximum, 5.5 kilometers from any aerodrome, um, not overcrowded people, crowded areas. Uh, so there are those typical regulations which I believe are very similar to yours. Well guys, this has been a lot of fun. I appreciate the time. Uh, I, I hope my audience has enjoyed it. They can certainly, I'll put the link to the website, and also it sounds like you guys have a YouTube channel that has some content that people should check out, and I'll, I'll link people over there if they want to go learn more. And certainly take the time, if you're watching this, uh, go over and 
check out what they're doing because like I said, I believe this is going to be the future. And if you want an easy way to get into contributing and not just having your images sitting on a hard drive gathering dust, uh, this sounds like a great way to do it. If you like this video, I hope you'll give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to learn more about drones and drone technology, please subscribe to Ready, Set, Drone, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks, Thanks for having us.